This presentation covers partnerships, termination, and liquidation. This is part three, and we're going to be looking at what does it mean if you do a marshalling of assets. Under the Uniform Partnership Act, a marshalling of assets is a priority ranking of creditors having claims against individual partners. Debts first have to be paid to separate creditors, and then next is debts owed to the partnership creditors, and then debts owed to the other partners. Individual partner creditors can make a claim against the assets of the partnership. All partnership creditors must be satisfied first. The creditors can only assert claims to the extent of a specific partner's positive capital balance. Each partner is liable for all the debts of the partnership. Partners are never liable for the personal debt of the other partners. To determine safe payments to be made to the partners at any time, the accountant assumes all subsequent events will result in maximum losses. No cash will be received in liquidating remaining non-cash assets and each partner is personally insolvent. Any positive capital balances that remain after the inclusion of all potential losses can be paid to the partner without delay. Although the assumption that no further funds will be generated could be unrealistic, it does ensure that negative capital balances cannot arise as a result of premature payments being made to any partners. Now, marshalling of assets is used by accountants to guide us with the distribution of cash resulting from liquidation process. So now let's take a look at an example. In our example, we have uh, profit sharing with Pam, Bill, and Mike. It shows their profit sharing of 2040-2020. We have uh, 50,000 in cash, 260,000 in non-cash assets. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a marshalling of assets. Now this is a little different. We don't really pay attention to the cash or the non-cash or the liabilities. What we're going to do is go through and work through the maximum losses and we keep doing it until we end up with one part. First, determine the maximum loss that each partner can absorb. We divide each partner's capital balance by their respective profit sharing. So, Pam is divided, 20,000 is divided by 20% means she can't lose more than 100,000 or her balance will go negative. Now you do that for all the partners and as we can see, the lowest is Pam, so that's the one we start with. Since Pam can only absorb a partnership loss of 100,000, we will first compute new balances, assuming that the partnership has a $100,000 loss. So we put the capital balances and their percentages across the top, and I would do this each time I walk through this. It really helps you see. Now we're going to assume a loss of 100,000. We're going to allocate that based on profit sharing. And now based on the new capital balances, Pam is gone. And now all we have left is Bill, Mike, and Dan at 40, 20, 20. So we're going to calculate profit sharing now based on the new remaining percentages, which equals 80%. So we do a new schedule. Now we go through and do the process again. We divide, we take the capital balance, the remaining capital balances, and divide by the profit sharing. And in this example, 80,000 is the lowest maximum one. So Dan can only absorb a loss of 80,000. Let's determine new capital balances for a loss of 80,000. Now we're going to calculate the new profit sharing percentage based on the remaining partners. Now the total is only 60% with 40-20. So we've got 67% for Bill and 33% for Mike. Now we're going to go through and do the process again. And now our lowest is 14,925 for Bill. Bill can only absorb a loss of 14,925, so let's determine new capital balances for a loss of 14,925. So we go through the process. We now have our new percentages. We allocate the 14,925. That zeroes out Bill and leaves Mike as the last remaining partner. Now what we can do is... 
to our redistribution plan. But first, this is our loss allocation table. You're asked to do this on your homework. I wanted you to see what it looked like. And as you can see, Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3, how the profit sharing changes based on the remaining percentages. And I have circled the estimated lowest loss, which is going to be used for the allocation for each schedule. Now, here is our pre-distribution plan. What we're saying is the first 75,000, which is 60,000 plus the 15,000 in liquidating expenses, is going to go to creditors. The next 14,925 is going to go to Mike. The next 80,000 is going to be split between Bill and Mike. The next 100,000 is going to go to Bill, Mike, and Dan, and all other cash distributions are going to be based on profit sharing. Now that ends this presentation, part three of Termination of Partnerships.